Hi there, my name is Abu and welcome to this video. Previously, I mentioned that React has two features that make it very powerful and these are the props and the state. So in the last video, we talked about the props in depth. If you haven't watched that video yet, you can follow the link on the top left corner of this video or I'll also leave for you a link in the description. So in this video, we are going to talk about the state. So what is the state? Basically, a state is just an object that holds some information that might change the behavior of that component in the future. Just like the props, the state manipulates data. But we have a couple of differences between the props and the state. And the most important difference here I want you to understand is props are immutable and the state is mutable, meaning that you cannot change or you cannot mutate a prop that is sent from a parent. Basically, the child just takes the prop and uses it as is. It cannot change it. We can change the state or we can mutate the state as much as we want. The props, data can only be manipulated by the parent component, whereas the state, data is manipulated within the component, as we will see later in the video. Also, the props make components reusable and in React, just as we looked at in the previous video, we can reuse components in React and the props is what make this possible and the state does not do that. Props are external and controlled by whatever renders the component whereas the state is internal to that specific component. So in this video, we will build a simple application. Let me show you a preview of this application. This application is going to be a simple counter and a changing text application. So the counter application starts from zero as the initial value. We can add five or subtract five from the initial value. And also down here, we can change the text. All this is possible using the state. Notice up here before button click, when I click this button to change the text, it changes to after button click. And I can also change the color. When I click on this, the color also changes. And when we reload this application, this component will re-render and we lose all that data. So the state does not persist data. So I hope you like this and without wasting any more time, let's get started. So in the last video, we had our store application, but we are going to build from this and bring in the counter application. So back in VS Code, we want to create a new component and we'll call it the counter component. Using our extension again, react arrow function component export. Until now, we haven't written any class component. Someone might wonder, can we use classes to write components? The answer is yes, but in the modern way of writing React applications, we do not use class components. This is because class components are slower than function components. And then you may have to write more lines of code to have the same output compared to function components. In function components, we use what is called the React hooks. And to bring in the state, we have to bring in the React hooks and we'll have the same exact output if we used class components. Let me show you. So from the top, we have to bring in the React hooks and the hook that we're going to use for the state is use state. And down here, we have to declare a variable that is going to hold the initial value of the state and then another variable that will manipulate that initial component to the next value of that state. So constant. And we have to destructure an array because the React use state hook gives us exactly two objects in that array. One is the initial value and the second one is the object that is going to manipulate the initial value. Get something from use state hook and it's a method that is expecting a value. As you can see down here, returns a stateful value and a function to update it. So this initial value can be anything. It can be a string, it can be a number, it can be an object, it can even be an array. It doesn't matter. 
but in this state since you want to update numbers add and subtract numbers so this is going to be an integer so my initial value is going to be zero the naming of these variables doesn't really matter i can have my initial value i'll call it counter and my second value by convention in react you have to call this set counter these are my two values the initial value is going to be stored in counter and set counter is a method that will update the initial value and counter will be updated to the next value let's see what value we're going to have in counter so console.log counter i could just say here h1 simple counter save this back in my app.js we have to register that component so from the top import counter component so down here i'm gonna take this out for now we'll bring it back later i just want to call counter component self-closing tag i'm gonna save this let's see what our application has for us save this and back to the browser let's inspect and see what is logged onto the console so inspect this and on the console don't worry about these warnings i should see here zero if i refresh this page i should still see zero because i am logging the initial value of the state let's try to change that value to a string back to counter component say this is the state save that back to the browser reload this page i should see this is the state on the console so that is the initial value of the state so let's see how to bring in the buttons that we had in our simple counter back to the application so this is a simple counter and now i want to bring in my buttons from react bootstrap i import a button and down here button so the first one is going to be five less and in here since this is logic put in curly braces and this will be the counter and on the right side of the counter i have another button five more so i'm gonna save this let's see what it looks like back to the browser we have five plus and five more but then we need to change this back to zero back to my application i want this to be zero i want it to be a number back to the browser should see zero let's make this look a little bit nicer so five less had a variant of warning and the variant is the prop that comes from this component so the variant here is warning on the second button this variant is success and this variant is a prop that is being passed through the button component back to the browser i should see buttons looking like that but so far they do not do anything and then also this counter the value is supposed to be in a button but the variant will have an outline button but then the value is this counter move this here back to react bootstrap i want it to have an outline like this so the variant will be outline primary so just copy this paste it there back to application we can see there's a variant so now how do we manipulate the state using these buttons a button has a prop called on click and it takes a function that manipulates this specific button we can have here a function return something and say console.log button clicked back to my browser when i click this button let's look at the state so inspect this the console i should see button clicked when i click it again i should see button clicked on click takes a function that manipulates what the button is supposed to do in this case this button is supposed to manipulate the state of this application i can take this out call this and say set counter and counter minus five because this is the decrement the subtraction of five remember this set counter is a method that manipulates the initial value counter holds the initial value and when we manipulate or when we change the value of the state this value held in counter is updated by the new value that set counter method changes it to back to my application when i click on five less you can see it's now manipulating it and it's still logging in the console down here because we still have this line of code here console.log the value of counter so you can clearly see that if i reload this i should see the initial value here is zero as soon as i 
click on five less, the value changes to negative five. So the value in counter has been updated from zero to the next value that set counter is changing it to. When you click this again, see it's negative 10 now and the value up here of the counter is negative 10, negative 15 and 20 and so on. Now we want to bring in addition of five as well. Back to the application, five more. Again, we have a prop called on click for buttons. This takes a function and set counter, counter plus five. Back to my browser. When I add five, it's now increasing the value by five. So basically that's how the state works. So we can remove the console log statement. We don't need it anymore. That was for debugging. And now that we know that our application is working the way we want, we can save that. And now this doesn't look very nice. Let's add a few margins to this and let's make this look a little bit neat. First and foremost, I want to add some space between the buttons themselves. And we can do this in two ways. Either we can use inline styling or we can declare an object outside the return statement of the component and have all our styles in that object. For five less, let's, let's use inline styling. We haven't used styling until now. The first variable here, it has another prop called style and this takes logic so calibrates but styling is done inside of an object so another calibrates for the object and now we want margin the first value of the margin is top and bottom we want it to be zero pixels but left and right we want it to be 10 pixels so we have a small 10 pixels margin between this button and that one for the next button we want the same thing so style and it's an object and margin zero top and bottom 10 left and right i should have a small margin here and on the last one i'm going to do the same so i don't need to type this out i can just take this and copy it since it's going to be the same and paste it here i have a bit of a margin and this looks much better i don't need the console either i can close that and we have it this way and now let me show you how to bring in a style. I'm going to make this header italic. I won't use inline styling. I'm going to declare an object outside of the return statement, constant, you can call it header style. And it's an object, font style. This is going to be italic. So save that. And down here on the header, you can say the style prop again, header style. So when I save this, I should see italic. And the same, I can add a margin to the header. Come down here and say margin. Top and bottom, 20 pixels. Then zero pixels to left and right. I should see a small margin here on the counter. I can also change its color. It doesn't matter. You can do as anything you want with this. So color, maybe blue. I should see a blue color. So that's how you can add styling to your application. You could also use bootstrap. But I just wanted to show you how you can have an object manipulate the style of your component. So far, this is what we have. We can subtract and we can add. And now for the next part of this application was changing the text. So how are we going to do this? First, we will need an initial text and then we will need the next text that our state is going to manipulate. First things first, we need to create another div I'll just have my main div, paste this down here. My next div is going to hold the text manipulation. So h1, change text. Back to my application, I should see change text. So for your next quiz, I want you, de I want you to declare an initial state, add text to that initial state, and then have a button to change the value of that text. Spend about five to 10 minutes doing this. And when you're done, come back and look at my solution. So in my solution, from the top, I have use state already imported from React. But if you didn't import use state, let me show you another way of bringing in use state. Since we have React imported, this React holds everything that can be imported from the React library. Down here, let me show you. Const text set text. This is coming from, I can call react 
dot use state that will also work initial text down here right after change text in curly braces i can call the text variable so when i save this i should see initial text but this is small let me have it in an h2 tag it's a little bit bigger that's better and now since this header is the same as this header the advantage of having the style declared outside of the return statement i can reuse the same style i have this header style i can have the same for change text so style header style so when i save this I should have the same text design this is the initial text and now we need a button down here that is going to manipulate the initial text back to my application i need a button here self-closing tag change text and this variant i'm going to leave it at primary i have a button to change the text of the state next prop is on click and this time i'm going to show you how to have a method outside this prop that will manipulate the state so back to the top i can have constant change change text handler in most applications you will find anything that manipulates the state will have handler in the end so change text handler or change counter handler so this is a function set text after button clicked back to my button down here this will take the method change text handler so when i save this back to my application when i click on change text i should see after button clicked you can have a function outside of the on click prop that manipulates the state and now we want to change the style of this text so initially it's black in color and we want to change it to red so again pause this video and change the value of the text to red after a button is clicked and come back and look at my solution so in my solution this is styling and since the color is going to change we need an initial value of the color constant color and set color and this is coming from use state and the color here is black initially and now we want to change the value of that color so down here constant text color equals to this is an object so color is color and now in this h2 i'll say style equals to text color so when i save this i should still see the same look initial text is still black but then i need a button here that is going to manipulate the state or the color of this text back in my application i'll have another button down here change color and the variant i'll have it as info let's see so i have change color and now back to my application i want on click change color handler back to the top i declare this function constant change color handler doesn't take any parameters set color this is a function and set it to red initial value of the color which is the initial value from the styling down here which is going to be set to this text that is coming from the state and then when i click on this button this method is called change color handler the set color method sets the color to red back to my application change i can change the text and then when i change the color i have it to red and i also need a little bit of spacing between these buttons this doesn't look very nice since i have the styling from these buttons up here i don't need to type all of this so copy on the first button paste it there second button paste it there save it back to my application i should see some spacing when i reload this i have initial text i can change the text and i can change the color and this is all possible using the state i can also change the color first and then change the text after so i hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions you can leave it on the comment below and in the next video we are going to look at navigation in react bootstrap the official homepage you can navigate to the home page getting started page and components page 
I'm mentioning pages, but these are not pages. These are actually components. Getting started is a component. Home is a component. But in layman's terms, these are pages, the home page, getting started page, and the components page. And we will see how to add navigation into our React application in the next video. So, see you then, and stay hungry and stay foolish.